Hello everyone, welcome to lecture six of Big Data Analytics. So the topic of this lecture is Apache Spark SQL, which is a tool for structured data processing. So let's see the topics we're going to learn in this lecture. What is Spark SQL? Uh, what is a data frame? And we want to learn uh, some of basic operation of data frames. Uh, we will speak about uh, Spark SQL queries, which are really important, and uh, it uh, would be a part of your coursework. And finally, we learn how to visu visualize the output with Matplot library. After this lecture, we expect all of you to be able to explain Spark SQL and its features and understand what is data frame, what is um, uh, data frame features, and uh, you would be able to understand the difference between data frames and uh, RDDS. Uh, you need to understand data frame operations, and of course, you should be able to make uh, Spark SQL queries. And finally, you should be able to use Matplot uh, library for visualization of your output. What is a Spark SQL? Uh, you know what is a Spark? Because in the last week we talked about the Spark and uh, we got uh, information about the Spark environment. Uh, actually, uh, Spark uh, SQL is a component on top of Spark Core, uh, which is actually a programming module for processing uh, structure and semi structured data. Uh, you, do you remember in the previous lecture we talked about RDD? and you learn what is RDD and uh, you uh, had some uh, uh, comments and some queries with RDD. Uh, actually, uh, Spark SQL uh, introduced a new abstraction, uh, which is different from RDD. It's called schema RDD or structure RDD, or uh, it's common to be called uh, data frame. So uh, we will learn in the future, in the next slides, we will learn what uh, is a data frame, which is uh, the new data abstraction in the Spark SQL, and what is the difference between uh, data frame and RDD. Let's uh, quickly have a look to the, some of the features uh, in uh, a Spark and a Spark SQL. A language API. Uh, you know Spark is compatible with uh, different languages, and uh, uh, API, like uh, um, Python, Scala, Java, HiveQL, and it's really important because it can be, um, it's, it would be possible to in integrate a different language in one, in one environment. Uh, a schema RDD, which I, I just explained what is this, as I said, uh, it, uh, it's a new uh, data abstraction, which has been defined, and uh, it's called a data frame. Uh, data sources. Actually, the question is, uh, what are uh, data sources for a Spark uh, SQL and a Spark course? As you know, data sources for a Spark course is a text file, um, Avro file. You know, uh, we discussed this in the previous lecture. And data sources for a Spark SQL is even more than this. You know, uh, it has been extended to be mm, uh, uh, be like a uh, Parquet file, JSON documents, uh, uh, you know, CSV file, um, Hive tables, text file, you know, it also has the data, data sources from Spark and also some more uh, uh, sources for Spark SQL. So we will uh, go into details for all of these uh, data sources and you can see in this uh, lecture, you can see how you can uh, a load uh, in data uh, from JSON, from CSV, and from Hive tables you know, to Spark SQL. Let's discuss some important features of Spark SQL. The first one is integrated. Actually, it's possible to, with Spark SQL, it's possible to mix SQL queries with Spark programs. As you know, uh, in Spark, we would be able to make like a complex analytic algorithm using APIs in Python, Scala, or Java. And now uh, Spark SQL, uh, would you able to uh, make queries on structured data, and then uh, you can integrate uh, these SQL queries with complex uh, analytical, analytical algorithm. That is, uh, yeah, that is a very useful and a strong integration. Another feature is unified data access. 
Of course, with uh, Spark SQL, you would be able to load uh, and query data from different sources, as I explained in the uh, previous uh, slides. You know, you would be able to interact with uh, like uh, Apache Hive table, Parquet uh, files, JSON files, CSV files. So there are uh, more different sources uh, can be supported by Spark SQL. Uh, another feature is Hive compatibility. It's really important because you uh, um, Spark SQL is uh, strongly compatible with uh, Hive and it can uh, run Hive queries uh, with no um, uh, modification and uh, even on the existing warehouse uh, because uh, Spark SQL uh, can access to all uh, part of Hive, uh, including MetaStores, uh, which means it can even reuse uh, Hive jobs, Hive MetaStore, uh, which is really good because, uh, uh, you know, Spark SQL is uh, much more faster than Hive. So uh, in this case, uh, if you have some queries in Hives, uh, tables, everything, you don't need to make any change. You can uh, uh, easily access to this uh, uh, information, to these uh, uh, data structures from Spark SQL and run your queries even faster than Hive. That is a really important uh, feature. Uh, the fourth one is standard uh, connectivity. So, as you know, you know it's, we had it in uh, the other environment. So, uh, Spark SQL can, is able to connect to a JDBC, ODBC, and also, um, uh, you know, it uh, it's, uh, include like a, a server modes with industry uh, a standard JDBC and ODBC connectivity. Uh, so, of course, it's, it's uh, one of the key features, not only for Spark SQL, for also other uh, analytical uh, uh, processing environment. So, the last one is, is scalability. So, this means um, Spark SQL use the same engine for both interactive and long queries, because some of the, uh, for example, um, uh, some of the uh, components are able just to uh, uh, create and run interactive queries. Some of them are able to uh, make just long queries, but Spark SQL is possible uh, is able to uh, manage uh, and uh, run both interactive and long queries. That is really good, and uh, this is the um, you can take the advantage of this feature for supporting. Uh, mid-query fault tolerance, you know, doing the large jobs, you know, even uh, small jobs, you know, so you don't need to be worried about using different engine for each of them. So it has a, it has a, the same engine for all of them. Okay. Uh, okay, let's see what is a data frame. Actually, as I explained in uh, um, Spark SQL, uh, introduce a new, uh, data abstraction, which is called data frame. Actually, it's a collection of data which has been structured uh, and organized into uh, like columns, like uh, tables, you know. So uh, as you can see in this uh, picture, this is a data frame. As you can see, it's like a table and it's uh, it has like uh, named columns. So a data frame, uh, which is a data abstraction in Spark SQL, can be created by different data, as you can see here. We have different sources for creating data frame. It can be from, comes from um, Hive data, CSV data, JSON, RDBMS, XML, Parquet, uh, Cassandra, and RDDS. So even the RDDS, we explain it in the previous lecture, we can convert RDDS uh, to the data frame. So in this lecture, we are going to consider the first three uh, data sources for data frame. And we uh, consider the related uh, commands. Okay. Let's consider some of features of data frame. Uh, the first one is uh, uh, the data frame is able to process data uh, 
uh, in different size. It can be small data like um, in the size of kilobyte or very huge data in the size of petabytes. Uh, and even it can be on a cluster in different size. It can be on a cluster with a single a node or a very large cluster. So the um, data frame can support uh, um, different size of data on different size of cluster. Uh, and it also it can support uh, different data formats. As, uh, as I explained, you know, you can have uh, like uh, uh, CSV, JSON, you know, any different type of uh, formats. And also it, uh, also it can support different uh, storage system like HDFS, Hive table, MySQL. Um, another feature is uh, uh, it can, it's possible to have like a kind of uh, optimization uh, techniques on the data. So it's a really interesting uh, feature because uh, Spark SQL has a tool which is called Catalyst Optimizer and it can it used uh, uh, some of techniques to optimize uh, data processing, which is uh, that's why it it's gets much faster compared to the similar um, components. And uh, uh, another feature is uh, it can be integrated with all big data tools and frameworks uh, because it's on the, uh, the Spark SQL is on uh, is a component on top of Spark Core and Spark actually this is the feature of Spark Core can which can be integrated with different uh, big data tool. So and uh, as you know, Spark SQL also can support API for Python, Java, Scala, and R. And uh, you can use any kind of these programming codes uh, in uh, in Spark SQL. Okay. Uh, let's see what is uh, the difference between RDD and data frame, and also data set as well. Uh, you know what is RDD because we have explained this uh, in the previous lecture. As you know, RDD is a, a data abstraction for representing data. Actually, it's a distributed collection of data on the uh, different nodes in a cluster. Uh, data frame is also a, a data abstraction for representing data and uh, like RDD is a distributed collection of data but uh, the main difference is it has been organized into named column uh, like uh, tables in their uh, traditional database or relational database. And the other thing is that uh, uh, another feature is uh, it uh, uh, is using uh, off uh, heap storage. I just quickly explain what is off heap storage. Actually, we have on heap and uh, off heap storage. Um, in on heap storage, all the objects uh, needs to be uh, serialized and deserialized by uh, JVM. But uh, off heap, uh, uh, in off heap storage, it can be uh, uh, managed by it uh, by the application, uh, which is really good because uh, uh, in this case it's possible to use native system memory uh, and uh, we are not forced to use uh, JVM. Well, and uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good uh, uh, feature for managing uh, um, uh, objects. So data set, uh, uh, it's a uh, extension of uh, data frame API and uh, it has been released in Spark 1.6. Uh, so the benefit of using data set, it has also uh, off-heap uh, off storage mechanism and also it, uh, it support a Catalyst Query Optimizer. I quickly explained in the previous lecture. Actually, the Catalyst uh, Query Optimizer uh, provide a new technique for building uh, extensible uh, query optimizer. Um, even if uh, a user can add some uh, um, uh, query optimizer to the to this tool that is uh, really good and of course it uh, make uh, you know, the whole system faster. Um, uh, okay, so let's consider RDD disadvantage. The first one is RDD is outdated. As you could see in the previous slide, uh, RDD is the first uh, data abstraction uh, defined in Spark. So, and after that, we had data frame and data set, which were uh, which are the um, new abstraction with uh, uh, more features. So, uh, you can see in the here, RDD is released in Spark one, and then data frame one point four, and our data set one. 
5.6. So um, uh, this is the like a old, an old version of a data abstraction. Uh, another thing is uh, uh, RTD is hard to use to be used because actually, uh, as you could see in the previous lecture, RTD need uh, to use Python, Scala, Java coding. But in data frame and data sets, we can uh, use SQL like queries. Uh, and you know, mo uh, there are many people who now say SQL, but uh, not everyone is expert in Python, Scala, and Java. Uh, another this one at disadvantage of RTD is. Uh, it has a slow speed. This is the main reason that uh, we don't want to use RDD uh, in terms of the performance and uh, um, uh, you know speed. Uh, it's it's uh, uh, very behind of uh, data frame and data sets, and it is the main issue for uh, some of applications. Okay, uh, for the rest of this lecture, uh, uh, we want to. Uh, consider uh, one of the one example uh, because it's easier to explain the comments through an example. The example that we want to consider is uh, uh, FIFA 18. So you can download uh, the data from the link that I have put here. This is the link that you can um, download the data. After you download this data, this data set actually contain uh, the features of player in the uh, soccer video game, FIFA 18. And uh, if you uh, download the data, uh, for if you use this link for downloading the data, you will have a, a zip file, which is, which is called Archive. And then you need to extract the zip file. If you extract it, you will uh, this uh, zip file include four uh, CSV file, complete data set, player attribute data, player personal data, and player player position data. I'll explain every data set. Uh, player attribute uh, data set. Uh, uh, this file uh, include information about player performance, like overall potential of the player. Uh, player personal data .csv, this file uh, include the uh, uh, personal uh, information about the player like nationality club photo age player player position data this file uh, contain the information about the position of player in the game and complete data set this file include all information in these three data sets in this lecture and also in the lab, uh, we use uh, this one, complete data set. Okay, uh, let's see how we can work with uh, Spark SQL. Uh, there are two methods that you can use in this uh, module. Uh, you can launch PySpark in Ubuntu. Uh, if you remember, uh, I, we have explained for you how to uh, install uh, VMware and also how you can uh, download and use Ubuntu image. Uh, we have done it in the first and second lecture. So uh, what you need to do, you have to launch your VMware and then you have to open Ubuntu image in VMware, uh, which we have done it before. Uh, then you have to go to the terminal and to type these comments to see these comments these two commands to uh, launch PySpark and Jupyter together. When you run this command, uh, then you will have the Jupyter screen uh, and then uh, you can open a new notebook in Jupyter and type your comments. This is the one way. Another way that you can use, if uh, you can use uh, Google Club, which is an online platform. Uh, so if if you like, you can use this online platform. If you or if you have any um, issue for installing VMware, uh, that I know some of the students uh, have got some uh, uh, technical or hardware issues. So you can uh, at the from this lecture, you would be able to. Uh, uh, do the practical session in uh, Google Collab, which I said that is a online, an online uh, platform. Uh, you need to open Google Collab through this link. You can see I have put this URL here. 
just click on this then you will have google club and then you need to open a new notebook you can see i have put a screenshot here actually you have all these steps in the uh, tutorial uh, document then you can uh, open a new notebook and then write your comments so uh, what we, you need to do first you need to uh, add these two box of comments the first one uh, download and install spark in google club and the second one configure java and spark home so you have to write these commands and execute it and then after that your notebook is ready for the uh, spark sql commands okay you can use anyway and then uh, now uh, your notebook is ready for uh, typing the comments okay let's see how we can practice some commands and some queries okay first of all um, what the what you need to do you know uh, you have to uh, use a spark session class you know the first point and the, the start point uh, for getting the functionality in a spark is using the uh, spark session class uh, how you can do it you have to just use the a builder on this in class you can see this is the common the comments are here you have to create uh, uh, an instance uh, from a spark session class as you can see here and uh, this is the first point when you type this uh, uh, this uh, spark session class uh, provides some of the supports uh, for uh, all the features in a spark skill that i explained before in the previous slides including the high features you know ability to write queries um, and uh, using hive ql uh, and any any uh, features that i explained in the previous slides so so this is the uh, first point of using spark now we want to, to create uh, data frames as i explained in the uh, previous uh, slides uh, you can create data frames from different sources um, uh, in this lecture we want to uh, learn how to create data from json file csv and uh, hive table uh, first one i'm going to explain to you how to create data from uh, json file uh, so as you can see uh, we can use any of these two commands so the first one df is the name of your data frame it can be anything and we are using uh, spark.read.json and then this is the directory of uh, json file uh, the file that we want to create uh, the data frame based on the contents of that so we can you can use this one or you can use uh, the second one which is the uh, uh, df is the name of your data frame and uh, it's using a, a general function for uh, reading data it has two parameters the first one is the directory of your file and the second one is the format for example here the format of uh, our source file is json if it's csv you can write csv but here we are writing json okay this is uh, this is how you can read the data from JSON file. Now we want to read data from a CSV file. Uh, uh, our FIFA example uh, has a CSV file, so we will use that example uh, to explain it. Okay, um, I have uh, called the, the name of our data frame as uh, uh, FIFA DF, and then I use a Spark read .csv. What I need to do is just to give the directory of my complete data set file. And this infer schema, if you make it true, then you can see the allocated name for the columns when you want to display the data. And the header is true because we want to see the header as well. You can use this 
or you can use the second command. Uh, I have named it as FIFA DF2 and uh, it's using the uh, general function for loading data and then directory and then is it, this is the same function that we used in for JSON file you know and then if you remember for JSON file we wrote format is equal to JSON but here we write format is CSV and the two previous parameters as well so uh, let's see how we can read the data from Hive so as I explained before Spark SQL can support uh, reading and writing from Hive and can access to the Hive environment uh, and uh, uh, Hive uh, meta store. But what is really important to know is Hive has a dependency, some of the dependencies uh, like a relation between data, between tables. Uh, and this is not included in the default uh, of a Spark distribution. So if Hive dependencies can be found in the class path, so then Spark would be able to load them automatically. So uh, what it should be happen is all Hive dependencies must be uh, presented in the nodes on the cluster, the, all the nodes that we're going to use to be involved in this uh, uh, processing of uh, Hive table. So uh, and they, they should have the um, Hive uh, serialization and deserialization libraries. So uh, let's have a look to uh, code. So what we need to do, you know, this is the, as I explained, a Spark session is the entry point or start point of uh, 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 processing data in Spark. So what we need to here, we have to enable Hive support and of course, we have to give access to the warehouse location of Hive. This too is really important. And also, then after that, you would be able to use create table like source using Hive. So you have to tell that you're using tables from Hive and then you would be able to load data to the Hive table. And then, of course, you would be able to create, to make queries uh, on Hive table. That's easy to do it. But, okay, uh, this is the, uh, uh, this is how we can uh, load data from three different uh, sources. You know, data frames are uh, uh, collections of uh, data elements. Uh, when you create a data frame, it provides uh, some uh, functions or operation for manipulating uh, data in a Scala, Java, Python, uh, and R. Uh, it's, it's similar to uh, Pandas data frame. You know, when you create data frame in Pandas, it has some operation for manipulating data. So now we wanted to uh, explain some of the uh, basic uh, uh, operation for processing uh, structured data. Uh, and then after that, uh, we will learn uh, uh, SQL queries in Spark SQL. Okay, so just let you know that in Python, uh, it's possible that you access uh, to the data frame columns by like DF, for example, if DF is, a, is our data frame and H is one of the attributes, you can write df.h or you can use index as index like df and have age as index, okay? You can use any of these uh, uh, representations for accessing to the attributes in uh, data frame. Okay, the first DF operation is show. Show display data sets in a uh, organized uh, column. Uh, so as you can see here, uh, we have defined uh, data frame as a FIFA DF, and then we have loaded data from complete data sets. From now on, we just focus on the FIFA 18 data set. Uh, and we have, if you remember, we have picked complete data set uh, for uh, our examples. Okay, we have loaded data to the FIFA DF, and now we just simply write FIFA DF dot show to displace the content of the data set. And you can see the results here. Another operation of uh, data frames is print schema. Uh, when you, this operation uh, show you the structure of the data frame. As you can see, if I write 
FIFA DF. FIFA EDF is it's our data frame that uh, we have loaded data to that. Okay. So if you write FIFA DF print schema, then you can see the structure of the data frame, the attributes, everything. Of course, it's not the whole because uh, a complete data set has 75 attributes and uh, it's just a part of that. This is screenshot just show a part of uh, attributes. There are some operations for retrieving information about columns. Uh, FIFA DF dot columns show the name of uh, uh, columns in uh, uh, this data frame. FIFA DF, this is the name of our data frame. Dot count uh, display the number of rows in this data frame. And len, which is coming from lens, FIFA DF columns show the number of the column in this data frame, which is 75 because we have 75 attributes. Another data frame operation is select. Select is very similar to uh, select in SQL. Uh, you can see I write uh, FIFA DF, the, my data frame name and dot select. And here is the selection of columns that I'm going to show which is name, nationality, and club, and dot show. This display these columns or these attributes for me. I can write FIFA DF select, and this is another example, name and long shots, distinct show. Okay, the distinct uh, is the operation. Uh, we have some, uh, you remember in SQL, we had uh, distinct uh, as a keyword in SQL. So uh, if you have many uh, duplicate values, and but you don't, you want to just to list distinct values or different values, then you can use this thing. Okay, uh, you can see the output here. Another DF operation is filter. Uh, with this operation, you can apply a filter on the data frame. For example, in uh, we want to uh, select people older than 21 years old. So um, we write FIFA DF dot filter, and this is our attribute age bigger than 21, and then we want to show it. Then you can see the results. Of course, this is not the all the results. It was just a, a screenshot of part of that because it was not possible to uh, show all the uh, uh, records. Uh, the last uh, operation that I'm going to explain in this lecture is group by. Um, just for example, if you wanted to see uh, the age distribution of players, so we use group by data frame group by, and we want to see the distribution based on the age, and you can just count and show them. You can see the results. We will have uh, the age distribution and we will have the number of players with uh, each age. Okay. Now we want to make SQL queries. Let's see how we can do it. First of all, we need to uh, register data frame as a SQL temporary view. Or simply, we have to create view and then we would be able to make queries on view. So this is how we can make view FIFA DF dot create or replace temp view. And then this is the name of the view. You know, the view is a, um, is a virtual table. So now we have a view with the name of FIFA view, and then we would be able to uh, make our queries on this view. Okay, the first query we want to create is just a simple query to see the content of the FIFA view. So we write spark.sql and we will write our SQL queries, which is select a star from FIFA view. The result of this query, which is a data frame, go to SQL DF. And now, we simply show the content of SQLDF by SQLDF.show. You can see the content of view in the screenshot. 
Okay, the second query, we wanted to see the age distribution of players, or we, we wanted to count the number of players by age. So we write a Spark SQL, select age count star as count. We consider count star as count. And from FIFA view, our temporary view, and group by age. So, and then all the results go to the SQL DF, which is a data frame. And then we want to show our data frame. You can see the output. Do you remember we had it two slides ago when uh, we were uh, learning a group by operation? So there are two ways that you can make this output. You can define SQL query or you can use a group by operation. Okay. The next query, we want to count the number of players in each club. So we write another SQL queries. So select club and count the star from our FIFA view. And then we will, this time we will group by it by club. So this is the result. You can see clubs, the number of, then uh, the list of clubs in this data set. And you can see each club, the number of players in each club. Another query, we want to count the number of players in each club and display those have more than 32 members. So it's very similar to the previous query, but we have put a condition. We don't want to show all the clubs. We want to show the clubs with more than 33 player or 33 members. So we repeat the previous query, select club count star from view, FIFA view, group by club, but we have a condition at the end, having count star or the number of players more than 33. So you can see this is a part of the previous results, which is showing only the clubs with more than 32 members. Okay, I have shown you some examples uh, of uh, uh, queries, just to know how you can make queries. Uh, now we want to see how we can visualize the output. Uh, we will use the matplot library uh, in Python to create uh, uh, the graphs for uh, uh, representing uh, outputs. So there are different types of graph. We have pi, bar, column, line, and you can see the other type of graph, but uh, two of most common uh, type of graphs are pi and bar. So in this lecture, I will show you how you can visualize your output uh, based on these two graphs, but I will put a link for you. You can uh, follow the link and see how you can create the other type of graphs. So let's see. Okay, here are five uh, important steps that you need to follow for visualization of your output. First of all, you need to import uh, these libraries into your code. And then uh, you have to convert uh, the SQL data frame to Pandas data frame uh, because uh, the function that we are going to use is, uh, um, is a part of Pandas. So uh, here is how you can do it. You just write SQLDF, which is our SQL data frame, to pandas. And the output is data frame again, but it's a pandas data frame, which is different from SQL data frame. Now you have to decide which kind of parameters you wanted to visualize, and then decide uh, uh, which chart you want to use, which type of chart you want to use for representing your uh, output. And then finally, we, we, you have to use pandas data frame dot plot to define your chart. There are some other ways. It's not the only way that you can visualize your output, but in this lecture, uh, we will teach you uh, this method. Okay, let's see an example. Uh, I said you have to use a pandas data frame plot for defining your graph. So let's see the general syntax of this function, you know, this is data frame dot plot, and we have x, y kind. Okay, uh, you can see I have defined this. But there are more parameters. There is a link here. You can see more parameters, but we are 
uh, using these three parameters. So three and Y are label or position for uh, uh, your graph. This is the uh, actually they are the attributes that you're going to show and the kind uh, specify the type of your graph. You can use line for line plot, you can use bar for vertical bar plot, or you can use bar hedge for horizontal bar plot, or histogram box and the others, okay? So, uh, you know, you can use this general syntax and you can specify the kind of your, the type of your plot or your graph with this parameter, like this, for example, if you want to use a line plot, you can write df plot and then kind equal to line. You can write in this way, or uh, you can write df plot and you can bring this line here. Use another function, dot line. You can use any of them, they are equivalent. So let's see example for bar and pie chart. Okay, let's first um, explain bar chart. Bar chart um, uh, use uh, like uh, some of rectangular bars for representing data, as you can see here. So this is the horizontal graph and this is a vertical graph. So if you want to define it, uh, this is the general tax, uh, syntax that you can use data frame dot plot this is the general function that i explained before x and y i have explained it at uh, the kind is equal bar uh, because we are using the bar chart if you write just bar it show the vertical plot but if you want to have a horizontal plot you have to write bar h this is for this one okay so uh, and loggy is another parameter uh, which, which is boolean, it can be true or false. It's by default, it's false. But if uh, you can use this parameter, when you have a big variance between the uh, data that you wanted to show, for example, some of them are really huge and some of them are really small, then you can uh, sh uh, uh, represent the data in logarithm function. So um, I have an example for this um, next uh, in the next tutorial. Okay, so you can uh, show this. Uh, you can have this syntax, or you can use another syntax. Uh, the only difference is we have you can move this bar from here to here and write data frame plot bar. You don't need this parameter and then the rest of parameters. You can use any of this syntax. Okay, let's uh, use these uh, commands for our FIFA example. Uh, do you remember this query we had in the previous slide? You know, uh, this query counts the number of uh, players by age. Now we want to visualize the output. So as I explained first, we have to uh, convert uh, SQL data frame to pandas data frame. We called it pandas df. And then we use a plot function to define the graph. So y and x are the attributes that we're going to show in x and y. So uh, the x is the age and y is the number of players in each age. And of course, we are using the um, bar graph. So you can see here uh, each age, 31, 34, 28. You can see the age and the number of players in each age. So you may want, if you have a look at the graph, you may want to see this graph, uh, which is ordered by age. I think it's, it's uh, better to see the order age, you know? because now it's not ordered and it doesn't look nice. So yeah, of course you can do it. I can show you in the next slide. Of course you can sort uh, the output by sorting values, uh, data frame sorting values, you can see here. And then by is the parameter that you want to sort. 
and then you have ascending parameters, which is Boolean. It can be true or false. Uh, let's see the example. We repeat the previous example, pandas df, but we should sort it before, you know, plotting, sort values by age. And ascending is true, which means uh, we want to see the age is as, uh, aged in ascending order. So, and this is the same as before. This is what we wanted to plot age and count and the kind of the uh, graph is bar. Of course, this uh, attribute that you, sh you write here uh, should be the X attribute here. You, it should be the same. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. Okay. So now you can see we have eight in ascending order and then the corresponding number of players. Okay. Now we want to explain pie chart. You can see you in the pie chart, you, uh, you can uh, present represent data uh, in a circular statistical graph. Uh, you can see it has been divided into different slices based on the value of numbers. So again, you can use data frame plot, X and Y, and the kind is pi, or you can move pi here and then remove this parameter and you can have just X and Y. So let's, this is the query that we had before. It retrieves the number of players in each club with more than 32 members. So now we want to visualize the output. So first of all, we have to convert uh, SQL data frame to Pandas data frame. And here we define our pie chart. You can see we use the general uh, function for plotting graph. And then we define X and Y, which is club and count. And the type of graph is pie. So you can see the output. Uh, you know, there, the, as I explained before, uh, this function has uh, more parameters that you can uh, have a look and play with them uh, to change the appearance of your graph, like put the label or more, some more things, you know. So, okay, now we are at the end of this session. In this session, until I introduce data frame and we compare RDD with data frame and data set, uh, I explain data frame operations and we saw some examples uh, uh, for data frame operations. We learned Spark SQL and practiced some of Spark SQL queries. And, uh, and then finally, we visualized the output with uh, uh, Matplotlib, which is a library in Python. Okay, thank you so much for watching this video. We will practice all of uh, these commands, queries in the uh, tutorial session.